As the business and risk environment become more complex and faster paced, board composition is moving front and center for boards, investors, and other stakeholders. Does the board have the diversity of skills, backgrounds, and perspectives required to guide the company into the future? This quarter, we explore the challenges of building a strategic asset board, including key recommendations from the NECD's most recent Blue Ribbon Commission report. And here are the highlights. If you go back almost a, a year and a half when we were putting the commission together and even thinking about the topic, um, there was this call by the institutional investors around refreshing the board and looking at boards that had become stagnant, um, that you, know, the, you had a, a large majority of the directors who had been there for a very long time, performance may have been lacking, and there was a movement among the institutional investors to start taking this under consideration in terms of refresh. We started thinking about how do we actually get to a point where we've got just a very, very strong board that is completely aligned with the strategy of the company and what are the steps involved. We can't have boards that look and operate like they did 20 years ago in an environment that doesn't operate like it did 10, 20 years ago. We need to have a continuous improvement methodology continuous improvement mindset on boards where we're constantly looking at who are the directors, how do they align with the strategy, and uh, what are we going to need. Staying still isn't going to work. Uh, you've got to constantly be evaluating who we have on our board, why we have them at this present time, how does that relate to our strategy, and how are we going to move forward to be looking at what are our needs going to be. We asked directors about the the most important mechanisms to help maintain an optimal board composition. Respondents overwhelmingly cited robust evaluation, 87%, and formal succession planning, 77%, as the most effective mechanism to achieve the right board composition. Bill, um, you know, last year you chaired the Blue Ribbon Commission on the uh, board's role in long-term value creation. Now, how do you think this year's report builds or complements last year's report? It's one of the things we uh, talked about last year a lot, and it came out very strongly in this year's report, was, you know, who are the right people on the board to be able to do what needs to be done, especially when you look at what, are your long what is your long-term strategy, what is your short-term strategy, and how do those two relate to each other and how you tie those together. So one of the things that brought to light for us as we talked our way through that last year was that the, the people who are on the board are probably there for good reason and they were the right people. However, as you fast forward a bit and look forward, you may need different skills and different experiences that, that help the company move in a different direction from, from, a, from a business point of view. So that therefore it just goes straight to composition. It says, who do you need to be on the board today? Maybe the ones that you have, who do you need to have on the board to get to where you want to get to? And it may require changes. Boards have been reluctant to self-evaluate in a, in a fairly critical way. They don't do it like businesses do it. In business, and I, you know, I spent 50 years in business, and I tell you, when you sit down every year and your manager reviewed with you what did you do well and what didn't you do so well, and did you meet expectations or did you not meet expectations, I think we need to ask those same kind of questions of boards and individuals on boards. And so I think this really does make the point. This is a, this is a sea change with respect to the way boards look at themselves. If you look back across... Uh, six, seven decades, uh, boards have owned corporate governance. But with the kinds of things that have been going on in the last years from, from the global economies and the interfaces of those, uh, geopolitical boundaries and how those things affect businesses, uh, active investors, activist investors, uh, proxy advisors, uh, the media, uh, where they declare at a given week, they say <laughs> earnings season starts next week. Uh, and it puts, it puts this focus so much on the short-term part. Having said that, when you look at the dynamics in the boardroom and what's been going on over the last couple of years, probably stimulated initially by the activist investors, but now also continued a bit by active investors and, and requests for buybacks and requests for larger dividends, uh, the shift that needs to occur is not the same, I don't believe, 
transitional kinds of things that we've experienced in the past. And the problem we have right now is there's the stigma around exiting a board. And if we, we've got to get out of that mindset that there's something bad about going off a board. Um, because boards need to think about what do we need right now to continuously improve. We're really talking here about separating or delinking the evaluation process from the renomination process. We need activist boards. Boards that engage maybe the way that activists do, maybe the way that active investors do, where in fact they're looking very critically at that business. Where is it? What does it need to do? And maybe more importantly, what are the technological shifts or business shifts that might occur in the, in the marketplace that will that will devalue how this company has operated in the past. So that's a very different way of acting. If we really want a, an environment of continuous improvement, you have to be able to give feedback to the individual. Uh, assessing the board as a whole is one thing that's required if you're a New York Stock Exchange company, but it's a whole different one to assess an individual and how they're performing and what they're contributing to the board. Um, because you get a little more granular, and that really gets to do we have the right people sitting around the table. If your major customers came to the board and said, we want to talk to the board, I doubt that there's anybody on the board saying, no, we don't want to hear from them. <laughs> well, why would you have any different response if your large investors came, or any investor came and said, we want to talk to you? I would think you'd want to know what they want to say. So the environment is changing so rapidly, and if you're not keeping up with that, and I'm not just talking about reading the Wall Street Journal every day, but exchanging, you know, taking the time to go to events and, and sit with your peers, understand what they're going through, hearing, you know, people with their, their boots on the ground in terms of heading on or dealing with these issues head on um, and sharing those experiences, that's critical for a board to be able to move forward. How do you know if your board is operating as a strategic <laughs> asset? The CEO and the C-suite executives probably ought to be walking out of a board meeting and saying, woo. That was tough, uh, in a positive way. But that was tough. We made it through, but but it was not an easy it was not an easy session. It it challenged us in ways that we might not have thought about before, uh, and probably as uh, if they can walk out of there saying, you know what, we can probably win better in the marketplace because of the dialogues we're having in that boardroom. But you want tough but helpful. You want challenging but helpful. You want people to to dig a little bit deeper, make you explain what's going on. But again, you want your CEO and the, the senior management team walking out of that going, that was really helpful. It's going to give me, it gave me new insights into the marketplace or into some aspect that I hadn't thought about in terms of competition. Uh, they made some recommendations that really could send us down the right path and avoid the, the pitfalls. That's to me the critical issue <coughs> is, is it's not just that you're getting challenged, but that board is also helping you.